Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, January 23rd. Today's topic is grant writing with the Ferry grant mother, who is Nasha Jones. I'm Lori Moffitt, one of the show hosts, as well as Peggy George and Tammy Moore. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Um, also, thank you to Patty Ruffing for doing an introduction to Collaborate that you can find in the resources. And there's another guest that you'll want to stay around for. And I'm trying to find his name. Oh, I had it. Now it's gone. So after the questions, um, Scott Begley is going to be speaking about the Global School Play Day on February 3rd. So in order to hear from Scott, you need to stay after our Q&A today. I will now turn the mic over to Paula Nagel, who will introduce Daisha for us. Hello, everyone, from a very chilly New Orleans, Louisiana, although I'm not going to complain because the sun is shining and we don't have to worry about a blizzard. It is my thrill to introduce to you today Daisha Jones, who I consider definitely my fairy grandmother. Daisha is currently the district uh, science specialist and STEM educator with the Durham Public Schools in Durham, North Carolina where she is also known by her alternate persona of Dr. Drizzle. She is a discovery education guru and program champion. Daisha has degrees in music, science education, math, and is currently pursuing a STEM degree. In addition to working with teachers, Daisha conducts professional development workshops and graduate level courses for the school district and local universities including working with some amazing PhD candidates at Duke University. She has presented extensively at state, national, international, and virtual conferences. I have personally benefited from Daisha's vast knowledge of grant writing when she helped me get started at one of the Discovery Education Summer Institutes. Thanks to Daisha's help and encouragement, I took the plunge and have received nine Chromebooks a MacBook Pro, an iPad Mini, and some other tech devices through Donors Choose. Many of us in the DEN community definitely consider Daisha our fairy grandmother. So without further ado, please let's give a virtual round of applause to Daisha and let's learn all about how to get more money into our classroom. Um, Daisha, your newbie question is, why is grant writing and knowledge of classroom funding resources important for teachers? Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon on the East Coast. Uh, just want to make sure you can hear me if somebody can just pop that in the chat window very quickly. Um, I'm coming to you from Durham, North Carolina, where we close school with a half an inch of snow. So I had a great snow day yesterday and excited to be here with you today. So I believe that grant writing is very important for our teachers because I know that teachers want to take students further. The real quick background on this is about seven years ago while sitting in my den with my husband, my husband gave me a newspaper article about a new grant writing um, possibility called Donors Choose. And um, he showed it to me and I said, well, honey, why do we need this? And he said, well, because then we could have Christmas for our children. Um, instead of you spending all the money. So it was kind of a funny um, conversation we had, but I took his advice and I wrote for a Donors Choose grant and was funded in two and a half weeks and I was hooked. Since then I have received um, quite a lot of money, I would say close to two million dollars in grants that I have personally written for myself and for our school districts and have helped um, teachers and educators across the country and in Canada 
right for over 10 million. So I think it's important for us to have these resources in our classroom, and I'm hoping that today you're going to find something that you can walk away with that will help you to get these resources. So just very quickly, this is me. Um, the picture on the right is what Discovery can do with a great headshot. The picture on the left is what I normally look like in the classroom um, as Dr. Drizzle. And then maybe in the question time we can have a little bit of information about why that is my altered persona. So we're just going to get started very quickly. Um, there are basically four types of grants that I work with. Fed grants, foundation, corporate, and philanthropic. Fed grants, the three that I mostly work with are HUD, NIH, which is the National Institute of Health, and then EdGov. I will tell you right up front that federal grants are not my favorite grants. Um, the reason behind that is they are very difficult to write. They're very cumbersome, and once you receive the grants, there is a lot of paperwork. Don't get me wrong, Fed grants is where the big money is. So if you're looking for information on getting a half a million dollars, $1.5 million, federal grants is where you're going to work um, or what you're going to work to. HUD grants are very exciting right now because you can actually encourage your housing and urban development um, partnerships in the town that you live with to apply for these HUD grants and then they can contract out with you to do activities in your um, neighboring schools. For example, with a $400,000 HUD grant, we were able to work in some STEM activities for after schools, Saturday science ed camps, and summer camps. Um, I would encourage you when writing federal grants to partner up with someone who can help you with those. It's not that they're impossible, they just do take a long time, and when you say you're going to spend a certain amount of money on a particular item or supply, you have to stick to that. Let's go on to foundation grants. Um, foundation grants are grants where people have given specific money for a purpose and you're able to utilize that money to help you get things for your classroom. Um, NSTA has several grants. I've included uh, the links here and we'll make sure those get to the live binder. Um, the Tapestry Grant is a $25,000 grant for teachers. In our state, Burroughs Welcome is a pharmaceutical research, medical research um, company that works with um, getting science enrichment into classrooms. In your state, you're going to have something just like that. On the live binder, I will include some links where you can find similar types of organizations like Burroughs Welcome where you can apply for $180,000 um, for a three-year summer enrichment program for kids, which includes um, stipends for kids and also includes salaries for teachers, which are very hard to find. Um, the next type of grants are more of the bread and butter, I would say, for the grants that we write, and that's going to be your corporate grants. I've included four. There are many more of these. Um, you can find these on my website or we'll make sure we include these in the live binder. But I'm including Walmart, Lowe's, Target, and Home Depot. Now the reason I included these specific ones is I've had a lot of success with them, but they are also competitors of one another. There is a lot to be said for um, having corporations compete for your business. Um, with Walmart, it, with all of these, actually, these are online applications that take you about 20 minutes if you've done your um, prep work, and we'll talk about what that is, where you can ask for specific amounts of money, and then you give them a short program synopsis of what you're going to do. Um, Walmart has $250 up to $2,500, all the way up to $100,000. With the $100,000 grant, you partner with a, um, another corporation in the state that you live with. Now, the reason I love corporate grants is that they are non-competitive. And, the, re and the, 
reason I say that is we have lots of Walmarts and lots of Lowe's and Targets and Home Depot, and each store gets so many grants that they can give out from the corporate level. Now, that does not mean that the manager of the stores have anything to do with dispersing the money, but let me give you a quick run through. So at Walmart, if I want to purchase science materials, I've looked in the chat window and noticed that several of you want science supplies. So if I want science supplies, I will write up a short project description. I will go on the Walmart site. I will tell them um, what I want to do in the classroom and why or what impact that's going to make on my children, and then I'm going to ask for the money. So let me go ahead and give you a quick tip here, and I may do it later. I never ask for the full amount. I really think that there's some extra cushion with that when you're when you're asking for money. If you don't ask for the full amount, it seems like people are more willing to give it to you. So if there's $2,500 or $5,000 is the cap, I ask for $23,2692, or if it's $5,000, I'll ask for $48,1243. Um, and then you click um, submit, and you usually will hear back within 30 to 60 days on all four of these grants. Now I did say that the managers have nothing to do with the disbursement of the funds, but it seems to work well if you go and meet the managers. Introduce yourself, wear your name tag, have a letter from your school and say, I am going to be applying for this and I'm going to be doing it with your store because I love shopping here and it's just the most amazing people and flattery will go a long ways with this. And just let them know. So in the event that the corporate office does call and say, you know, I've got three schools that are interested in this and one of them is that crazy Dacia Jones, the manager will either say, oh my goodness, I've met her, I love her, or oh my goodness, she's bugging me to death, leave her alone. Um, but it seems to work to make that connection. With a Lowe's grant, you definitely have to do that. You have to go and say, here I am, this is what I'm going to do, because there's a checkbox on the Lowe's. So let me um, pull down to Lowe's for just a minute. Lowe's has two different types of grants. The Toolbox for Education, up to $5,000. It opens twice a year. There's a fall and a spring um, announcement for that. And they, again, are looking for great projects. I see that a lot of people are um, putting in there about technology. And I will tell you right up front that companies are not funding technology as much anymore. Now, that doesn't mean you can't ask for it, but they're funding passion or they're funding projects that make an impact. So with the Lowe's Toolbox for Education, one, one that we have won a couple years ago, my teachers wanted iPads. iPads were sort of new at that time and they really wanted to really get into those with their kids, but they knew that I had said that companies will not fund technology. So they came up with this project of kids doing digital photography and then sending their pictures across the sea to other children in other countries and comparing and contrasting ecosystems and then setting up some FaceTime opportunities and making global connections. Well, Lowe's was all over that. We loved the idea of global connection. Also said, absolutely, we're going to fund this amazing project. Well, the amazing project called for $4,700 and those classroom teachers got their class or their 10 iPads or whatever they ordered. So although I say they don't fund technology, they're really looking for the passion in your project. I would encourage you to search on um, the computer great projects that have been funded for classroom teachers having to do with technology. That's how I use Google. I put every word in there. And you will find a lot of PDF copies of grants that people have written that they've just uploaded for other people to use. I also have a several um, examples that you can look at. I don't put those out there for everyone, but we will stick them on the live binder and you're welcome to use those. Um, Target has three different, um, three different grants that you can have. One is a field trip grant. Um, for up to $700, they dropped that a little bit this year. One is an arts grant for someone that really wants to talk about drama or music. 
um, and the arts, and then one of those is a literacy grant. $2,500 for the latter two, and you can apply for those um, a couple times a year. If you win it, you may also apply for it again the next year as long as there's a 12-month thing. Now, Home Depot, I'll just tell you this real quick. So I wanted to have gutters for my students. We were going to build racetracks, and then after we built racetracks, we were going to clean them out and use them for a celebration and have a 500-foot banana split party. So I went to um, Lowe's and just walked in the door with my sad face and my, my um, saying, oh, we have nothing and will you help me? Because Lowe's had always been the person that, or the company that had helped me and still does. Um, but at that moment, they just were not, they couldn't, they didn't have time, they were tired of me, my mask that I used to disguise myself had been discovered, and um, they told me they didn't have anything. So I decided to run across the street and go into Home Depot. And I went to Home Depot and I put on the tears a little bit and said, this is what I need and I, I really have it and I need it tomorrow and my kids are not going to have anything. And lo and behold, I just went to Lowe's and they weren't able to help me. Well, there's something about mentioning a competitor's name and immediately I was able to get those um, gutters and we were able to have our race car track and then we were able to have our banana split party a little bit later on. So corporate grants are a great um, bang for your buck. When you fill those out, I would encourage you to look at the application ahead of time. They'll, they'll let you download a PDF application to look at. Go ahead, have it filled out in a Word document so you can just copy paste right over to your grant. A couple things you're going to have to have is you're going to have to have your EIN number, which is your tax identification number. You're going to have to have some um, demographic information on your students. You can get that from your school secretaries, from your district website, or there is a website in Peggy and Paula. Maybe you can find it for me real quick. I think it's ncef.ed.gov, where it's a national clearinghouse of educational statistics. And you can um, get the information there and just have that ready. I'm sort of monitoring the charts, uh, the chat room too, and someone's just posted about Mattel. Mattel is one of the up-and-coming companies right now that's doing a lot to support education. And they are giving away um, Hot Wheel tracks, which is 140 feet of car tracks with 40 cars and all the extensions to any fourth grade teacher that applies for it. Now, every couple of weeks they shut it down because they've run out, but they make more all the time. So I would encourage you to support Mattel. And I'm looking right now about grants covering teachers in Africa. So I mainly work with the United States, but there are opportunities for um, people outside the country. And we'll make sure that we put that um, on our live binder model to make sure you have that because there are opportunities for you too, especially with big companies like Mattel and Lego. So where it all started were the philanthropy grants. And I'll talk about donors choose in just a moment. But let's look at Council on Philanthropy. So this website here will give you a guide to grants. And they're going to um, help you figure out where the little lady in your city lives that has 1,700 cats in her house and her husband died 20 years ago and all her money is under her mattress and she wants to give to schools who are going to promote sewing machines. I know that's kind of weird. But there are people out there like that who are looking to help um, schools and teachers and students and they just don't put their name out there as much. So you want to look through that Council on Philanthropy and find uh, those opportunities and also check with your Chamber of Commerce who um, are constantly taking emails and messages from people who said, you know, I've got $750,000 and I really want to help a school and this time I don't want to help a school that's a low income school. I want to help a school that doesn't have low poverty, but I want to help their arts program. So I would check on that. Um, so let's go to Donors Choose. So I am a huge fan of Donors Choose. Um, I was able to meet Charles Best last year um, and just feel that this is one of the best companies out there for helping teachers get what they need in the classroom. So with Donors Choose, real quickly, the application for this will take you about 10 minutes. Um, you're project will not go live until you upload a picture, and that will give you information about that too. Um, you get points with Donors Choose, 
and you are able to purchase things $400 at a time. And every time you hit $400, you go up another point. The cool thing about Donors Choose is you just get to shop. And for me, when I was um, many years ago um, and had, had a little girl, Molly, and was pregnant with Katie, we had no money. But I love to go shop. So I would go to Kmart at night to make Molly um, not cry so much. And I would fill my cart up with things at Kmart. And then I'd go hide it somewhere and leave. But I had this wonderful feeling of, oh my gosh, I felt so good about that. So with Donors Choose, you get to shop at many different vendors. Now the best thing Donors Choose has done in a long time is add Amazon to their um, vendors. That was a long time coming. A lot of people pushed for Amazon, and it's a wonderful um, place. Now, let me go and tell you something quickly. Donors Choose is only for public schools. But I did talk to Charles Best, and they are working feverishly to get Donors Choose to um, go to private schools. So that should be coming up pretty soon. The other cool thing in Donors Choose is they put out coupon or matching codes. Last year, a lot of friends from the Discovery Education Network wanted to attend ISTE, um, which is an international society for technology education, and they wanted to go, and it was in Philadelphia. Well, Bill and Melinda Gates just made this huge announcement that they would fund 90% of all teachers who wanted to go if they put a, um, a project up. So you're, you're going to want to sign up for it. You're going to want to read through the tutorial. And then you're going to want to fill your cart as large as you can, um, thinking about $400 at a time, because there's some metrics on um, the more you have, a little bit less chance. But right now, 85% of Donors Choose grants are getting funded up to $400. I will tell you that title is everything. Um, you need to know what your title wants to be. And sometimes I don't know my title until after I've shopped. So I just put in a couple letters for the title so that uh, program will go on, and then I'll shop for a bunch of stuff, and then I go back online and fill out my very quick, easy application. Donors choose. You need to be brief, succinct, and passionate. You want um, someone reading that to go, oh my God, this is a real teacher with a passion for kids, and they really need these materials. So they're going to look at your title first. They're probably going to look at some geographic you know, um, things about where you are and if there's a connection to them, but then they're really looking for the heart of your proposal. So again, donors choose and um, we can talk about that. So let me just show you a couple things. This is a donors choose funded um, page. And um, sorry, my daughter's trying to FaceTime me right now. I'll just turn that off. Um, is a donors choose uh, funding and these are things that I got in my classroom in three years of asking for it. So here's a page. I'm going to scroll to the next one. And you can see that you can get almost anything with Donors Choose. I decided I wanted to have um, some after school programs for our kids, a real high poverty area, and I wanted to provide positive information. So we um, got 10 Singer sewing machines, about 20 chess sets, and some um, leather bound journals. And it got to be almost embarrassing that every week the principal would call down and say, Daisha, you have a donor's choose. Um, kind of cool, but you can see that there's a lot of things you can ask for. One of these uh, talks about speak easies in school. And that was because we were studying the um, Great Depression. And we got Monopoly boards. We got um, soda makers so kids could practice chemical and physical changes making their own sodas. And at the time, we got boom boxes because we were opening up our own speakeasy. So here are some tips for you. Um, be precise about, you want, about what you want. People that are reading these grants are more likely than not educators. And they don't understand all of our jargon like IEP and OCD and ADHD and ONG. And they don't understand that. So you want to be real. Um, when you write these grants. Um, you want to be passionate about what you're doing. You want to come up with great titles and great tie-ins to the communities. And then make sure that what you're asking for is realistic and then believe that you're going to get it. The um, 
that's one of the most important things. When I help teachers write grants across the country, I say, when you get this funded, here's what you're going to do. So make sure that you believe that you're going to get it. And then the extra points don't always ask for the higher amounts when you're working with corporate grants. So how do you ask or decide what to ask for and how to ask for it? This is our process in Durham Public Schools. So when I work with teachers, now I'm the science person. So I'm in charge of all the science and, and making sure that we have great materials and great curriculum and great relationships. But um, I also try to help people write grants for other reasons on, in my spare time. So this is what we do. We say, what do you need to teach? Um, how do you want to deliver the lesson? Use your standard and link to D. Uh, we use Discovery Education in our um, in our district, which if you don't have that, I would encourage you to do that. And that's also um, something you could write a grant for. But use your standards, um, tie it to digital media, front load your students with the standards, and get feedback. So if you look at this next picture, this is we have student engagement meetings. So the teachers sit down in our PLCs and we decide what we have to teach. Then we go into a classroom, so this is fifth grade, and we say, okay, guys, we have to teach you force and motion. What do you want to know about this? So our kids um, go knee to knee and nose to nose and talk about, oh, all the cool things they would like to see. And then we um, go back in our PLCs, and this was their interest charts. Um, so if you just take a moment to look at those, it's kind of cool to see what kids want to know, and we feel like if kids get um, have a say in what they're going to learn, the buy-in is going to be greater. So after we saw what they wanted to know, and then we um, come up with some immediate teacher thoughts for how we're going to teach, we decide that we need Lego robotics we need because they want to know about NASCAR. We want to do some force and motion probes and do some craft supplies. So one teacher um, for this grade writes this grant to Walmart, and in 30 days, this is what they receive. Now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, you have to, um, goodness gracious, um, you have to plan this ahead of time because the money doesn't come the next week normally, okay? But that's how we encourage it. So here's just a great picture of our kids using the force and motion probes that they asked to see. I saw someone say, um, could they see my uh, funded grants? Um, the reason you can't right now is because I am no longer a donors choose purchaser because my, my, um, my title has changed. So I'm not allowed to write grants anymore for myself. I help teachers write them all the time. I wouldn't be um, adverse though to calling donors choose and seeing if they can re-establish my account just so you can see my old projects. I will try to do that, okay? Um, someone's also saying they have an account with donors choose but needs a little help with that. Um, it, it does look overwhelming for a moment, but it's not. And, you know, I can't help everybody in the world, but if you, you know, tweet me out or email me and just want me to look at something for you, as long as I have a little bit of extra time, I'd be glad to do that. So now you know what you want, you know who has it, and so where do you go to get it? So this is my little cheat sheet, and um, it just sort of tells you where you should go if you're looking for certain amounts of money. Now we didn't even talk about places like Verizon or Mitsubishi or Honda. There are many places that are given money. The places like Verizon, Mitsubishi, or Honda are very competitive. So instead of having 10 people competing for a Walmart grant because you have six of them in your um, school district, you may have 500 competing for a Verizon grant because there's only one company. So just be aware that there are some harder things. Um, if you do have the time and expertise, I encourage you to work on your Fed grant. And I was going to say something else to that effect. It might come to me in just a moment. Okay, so this is my passion to share with educators, but my passion is not grants. I'll be honest with you. I kind of got pushed in that area. I'm a husband, which I'm still grateful for. I'm waving at him now. But I don't like to do it all the time. I'd rather educate students and, and uh, work with teachers on pedagogy, but we see that you really do need to make connections um, with your kids, and we don't always have opportunity to do that. 
with limited supplies. One of the questions I asked you at the very beginning was, does your um, district allow you to apply for grants? And you would be surprised that there's some metrics out there that, was, that say 45% of the country does not, that it does not happen in districts. They want everything completely run through them and they want the control over it. So just be aware when you're starting to write for grants, I'm always of the mind it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission, but with school districts I would go ahead and say ask for permission first. And if you're going to be ordering technology, always, always, always check with your technology people because they may decide they're not going to support what you're doing. We had a um, teacher that got 80 Chromebooks, which is amazing, but they're not a Google district, so it didn't work. Okay? Um, so Peggy, I think I kind of went a little bit, not as long as you wanted me to. I see a lot of people adding tons of um, grant opportunities in the chat window, and there are many out there. Um, Dollar Tree, Best Buy, um, Kangaroo gas stations. But I think I'll stop right now and see if there's any questions that um, I was not able to catch. So do I just need to push my talk button off and someone's going to come I in? I can capture some questions, questions Stacia. Okay, there we go. <laughs> One that just came up Excellent. was, Are you first, read those well, we get this presentation. Well, this it will be recorded, Ronald, and you can access a recording. How do we keep talking together going forward? That's a good question. Yes, so on my end, what I normally do, and, and you guys that know me know that I write grants a lot, so I'm really overwhelmed right now with, I probably help teachers with 15 to 20 grants a week. But what has worked with one district is that we've actually started an, an Edmodo group, um, and conversations are happening in there. So sometimes I will always step in um, to the Edmodo group, but it looks like uh, most of the time now, questions are being answered by other people. Like I noticed there's this lady named Francie, or Francis that's been doing a lot of um, chatting who, from what I saw, had amazing ideas. So maybe if we put people like that into an Enmodo group that could have conversations and help each other, that might be a way to continue um, where I could help out a little bit. Thanks, Stacia. Um. And here's the Dr. Drizzle question. Uh, Peggy wants to know where Dr. Drizzle comes from. So when I was in the classroom, and I've only been out a couple of years um, as an instructional coach and now a science director, uh, we loved the Magic School Bus. My fifth grade students were overwhelmed with the Magic School Bus. And so um, they found out that Miss Frizzle was named Miss Frizzle because of her first name started with an F. So my students started calling me Miss Drizzle. Well, several years later, working with universities and, and different places, I was sort of given this honorary degree of now Dr. Drizzle. So I have lab coats. I have a new, um, my license plate is now Dr. Drizzle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm known across the country for that. My Twitter's Dr. Drizzle. And so although I don't get paid lots of extra money for that, I do mm -hmm. get paid in um, accolades and um, certificate, things like that. So I'm kind of an honorary Dr. Drizzle. That's great. Now those were the, the questions I was able to capture. Does anybody else have questions for Daisha? If the shift is so, moving up, I'm sorry, I'm just reading Brent's question. If the yeah, shift is moving away from funding technology, yet if your passion and project requires devices, do you have any suggestions for the first step? Yeah, so Brent, I don't want to discourage you about not asking for technology. You can still get technology, and we get it all the time. But as a rule, places aren't just funding technology. So if you put out there that you need 17 iPads for your students to um, collect data, that's kind of frowned upon. But if you say that um, you want to collect data and work with Journey North on research of monarch butterflies or red um, tulips, and the device you need will be iPads, that gets funded. I, did, I hope I didn't mean um, or 
confuse you on that. It's, it's just if you just go to some place and say I need 20 Chromebooks, they look they won't do that as eagerly as they will if they understand the project that's going to happen that you're using the Chromebooks for. Does that make sense? Yeah, he, he yes, he agrees with that. Okay. Um, what do you recommend about having potential grant ideas prepared in advance? Uh, say that one again. What do you recommend about having potential grant ideas prepared in advance? Oh, I, I totally agree with this. So when I was um, younger, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would write ideas down that I had and then couldn't read them the next day. So then my husband got me a little tape player and I wrote those ideas. So I'm constantly writing up ideas and projects that look really cool and hiding them away for that moment when I might need them. I also reuse, uh, not, not the ideas totally, but I, I reuse grants a lot. If something works, I'm going to revamp it and use it again. So I try to come up with some of the same verbiage. Now, it depends on who I'm writing to also. I saw someone talk about gardening. Mm -hmm. Kidsgardening.org is a really great company who will fund you up to $500 and help you get a garden started. Also, you might want to follow Kim Miller from Idaho. I think she's at Kim Miller on Twitter. She has an amazing website um, for gardening activities and they've gotten thousands and thousands of dollars to um, make their school a very garden friendly school. So that might be a good idea for the gardening people. Great. How about non-tangible items like subscriptions to online sites that require them or apps for assistive tech? Yes. Yeah. So um, with Amazon, there's a lot of things out there now. If you go to Donors Choose, you're going to have opportunities for subscriptions. But your best bet for subscriptions and, um, and apps and things like that are the corporate places like Walmart, Target, Lowe's, because you're not asking for materials from their from their store. I wish I'd said that earlier. In fact, they don't care if you buy anything from their store. They're just giving you money. This is the educational um, foundation side of that. So you ask for $4,000 and then you, you actually get the check. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, make sure your secretaries know you're writing these because a check for $4,327 will come to your school um, and it won't have any information about it. The secretary mm -hmm. will just say, oh my God, we just got a check for $4,000 from Walmart. And if nobody tells her that you did it, she is going to pay the copy bill with it. Mm -hmm. Because secretaries have to make sure that they are paying bills at school. So right. you'll get that money and then you can buy assistive um, technology for classrooms, you can buy apps, you can buy subscriptions. Terrific. Uh, Francie, go ahead. You'd like to, to share your experiences. Go ahead and push the talk button, Francie. No, I'm not hearing you either. I don't see the talk button on. Right above participants, Francie, you'll see the talk button. Right here. It's not on the slide, but it's it's in the left hand column. While we're waiting for Francie, which companies do not require the school to be 501c3? I, this teacher works for a small Christian school. Um, okay. So uh, Target, Walmart, places like that, when you go into that, you have to sign up for a cyber grant account when you go into places like Target, Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot, which are very safe places. It'll tell you real quickly. Like they'll say, answer five questions to make sure that you are um, eligible to take this. Walmart's going to be, you're going to be eligible. Lowe's is going to be eligible. Um, 
several places like that. Donors Choose is the one that's not right now, but we're hoping that that will be in the future. Great. Okay, Francie, you now have the mic. Great. This is Francie Kugelman, and uh, I I help volunteer for Donors Choose, and I currently read all the proposals for visitors to come to your school or field trips. So that's another thing you can think about. Out in terms of grant, and The reason I'm so successful in getting my projects funded I go to the health section of donors like choose and I look at back. partner funding opportunities and And that's when a part <laughs> partner wants to sponsor half your project. Francie, unfortunately, your voice isn't being picked up very well with the mic. We would have loved to be able to hear what you said. Um, those were the questions that I was able to capture. Now, we do have a special guest, at least as far as I know we do. And that is going to be Scott Bedley who will talk about the Global School Play Day on February 3rd. Oh, he hasn't lost in yet. OK, so he ought to be here soon. Go ahead, Paula. I'd love to hear more about how you approach the big box stores like Walmart and Lowe's and maybe give us a few quick tips on what we could maybe even do this weekend to get something for our classroom. Okay, so um, for Walmart, if you're going to ask less than $250, they ask that you do not um, walk into a, or fill out the forms. So what I found pretty successful especially if you live in a larger town and you have several Walmarts, is just to take your name tag, yourself, um, maybe a letter with, let, I mean, a, 
yeah, a school letterhead and just say you're looking for a few supplies for your classroom that you need immediately. Um, and I would say more times than not, teachers walk away with at least a $100 gift card. So that might be something you know you can do very quickly um, with Walmart. With Lowe's and Home Depot, they're mostly interested in helping you, but they also want to connect their um, their employees to help you too. It's something I just I didn't mention. So when you fill out your information for Home Depot and Lowe's on those websites, it's going to say, "Could you use some Lowe's employees to help you?" You're always going to say, "Absolutely yes." Um, we did get an outdoor garden. Um, we asked for $5,000. They liked it so much they gave us $97,000. And we took um, 30 of their employees um, every Saturday for like two months who came out and helped dig things up and put up the gazebos and things like that. So you just have to be brave and walk in and, and understand that it's okay if they say no, but sort of don't take no for an answer in a really sweet and kind way. Really share the passion for what you're doing in your classrooms with them. And I, I still say most of the time, um, we have about a 95% success rate in all that we're doing right now. And I think it's because of our personalities and just going in and saying, um, can you please help? Because I feel like most people are inherently very kind and want to help each other. So I would try that. I would also work with local universities. Um, Chamber of Commerce is another one. Senior centers, I know that sounds strange. I'm in a project right now with them um, collecting their stories about how their jobs have evolved over the years and how our kids can take over some of those STEM jobs. And you'd be amazed that when you leave places like that, they'll say, you know, can we give a donation to your school? Um, I don't go in there looking for that. I promise you that. But sometimes things just fall into our laps, too, um, as long as you're sharing your passion. Thank you so much, that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> And Peggy or Paula, if you decide you want to set up an Edmodo group or something, let me know. I'd be glad to help. Um, I, I would love to join it and you know hear conversations and help when I can. Yes, yeah, so I was wondering if there was already an Edmodo group. Um, you said there was one. I was trying to find the join URL, but I haven't been successful yet finding that. But if we yeah, do so the couple of Edmodo it. groups that I'm working with right now are going to be private, just because they're within school districts and um, that's the way uh, superintendents have set those up. So um, if we want to start another one, I don't mind. I get notifications on which ones are being used, and I can pop in on those. Um, I would love to add you to the other people, but they have asked for right now those be private. No problem. I understand how that works, but thank you so much. You're very welcome. I know Scott was going to speak next. Uh, Peggy was going to introduce Scott, I think. So I will turn the mic over to Peggy, who will talk a little bit about the Global School Play Day. Well, I am so sorry that Scott has not been able to join us. And I don't know if he's having problems logging in. But he would have been the perfect person to tell you about this. I do have this information on our live binder, though. And there's a video there that you can play to learn more about it. But the Global School Play Day is coming up very soon. It's on February 3rd. And it's an opportunity for everyone to get involved at the same time around the world. And there are over 84,000 participants, and their goal is to try to get to 100,000 by Global School Play Day. And it's for students in schools around the world, grades pre-K to 6 or ages 1 to 12. Um, grades 7 to 12 also joined in uh, in 2015. And so be sure to watch that recording and you'll, you'll get the idea of what it's all about. But the whole idea is to emphasize how important play 
is to learning. And we hope that schools will continue to um, keep play active in your schools and not just uh, focus on testing and um, strictly academic things because we know that so much learning can come through play. So um, I'm sorry that Tim wasn't here to tell you about it, but please plan to join it. Also want to let you know that we don't have a show next Saturday because there are two amazing things going on. The Student Technology Conference and Educon 2.8 in Philadelphia. Now Educon 2.8 is um, a face-to-face -face conference, but they stream a bunch of their sessions and they're all free. So just go to that Educon site, the link is in the light binder, register, and then you can choose the sessions that you want to um, tune into and kind of create your own personal schedule for that. The links are also there for the Student Technology Conference, and that is an entire conference done by students for students. So um, that's a real treat if uh, you haven't participated in that before. We still have a couple shows we're waiting to finalize, but on February 13th, we have Sam Glicksman joining us, and he's published a great new book on iPads and media creation, and he's going to be sharing some of his great resources and ideas about that on February 13th. So I hope you come back and join us for those. And Lori, you can go, that's just the slide that tells about the Student Technology Conference, but that link is in the live binder, so that's the place to go to get your info. And Lori, you can go ahead and close us out, and I want to say a huge thank you to Daisha for this amazing presentation. It is just so great to learn from somebody who has so much experience with it and is willing to share the tips and tools and resources that you have. And Daisha, if you think of any other links that you'd like to add to the live binder, feel free to add them on our planning doc, and I'll make sure that they get into the live binder. So thank you, and thanks to all of you that shared links in the chat. I'm sorry we couldn't hear Francie because she has amazing things to share too. So be sure to check out her webinar recordings. So now go ahead, Lori. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered together all of his professional development, development in one place, including the Host Your Own webinar series. You can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session yourself, and as long as you make the event public, it is a free session. You can also nominate a featured teacher. This is the complete link for that. Uh, you can nominate yourself as well for the featured teacher of the month. The link is in the resources tab of the Live Finder. As you exit the session, the survey link sh should uh, the survey tab should appear in your browser. You can also take the link from the chat or it's in the live binder. At the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. It now prints out with your name. Uh, make sure you get this sent to a personal email address and not a school address because schools tend to block this from getting to you. The video and audio collections are in iTunes U. And also with an RSS feed, you can get the show archives, including the full regular Illuminate or Collaborate recordings. Special thanks again to Daisha Jones, the fairy grandmother, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.